Hello students, Mr. Madison here, and I am here for this reason. I am going to create for you a video key to mini quiz number 18. Now mini quiz number 18 has six problems on it. All of the problems involve um, some sort of a linear relationship. Uh, in, in a number of the problems, you'll be creating equations uh, linear equations, and then answering a specific question about that that equation. So I'll try to um, be as uh, demonstrative and explanatory as as I possibly can, in hopes that um, what I offer you here will really, really help you understand how to do these problems. Uh, thinking that uh, it won't be but uh, a day or so before you have to take your uh, quiz on uh, linear. Uh, functions, and I want to make sure that I did everything I could to prep you for that. So, without further ado, we will start. This this mini quiz, um, as I mentioned, has six problems, and the very first problem involves um, a weather system, and the problem reads that there's an intense cold weather system moving uh, into the area, uh, and, and then it gives you uh, two pieces of of information and those two pieces of information correspond to two ordered pairs that would be on the line that uh, models the situation. It says that uh, at noon on Thursday the temperature is 84 degrees. Now here's what I'm going to do and I recommend this to you. This is problem number one. When it gives you that first time noon. Let that very first time correspond to zero. And then everything will play af off of that. So for example, 1 p.m. then would, would correspond to 1. Um, 5 p.m. would correspond to 5. Midnight would correspond to 12. 1 a.m. would correspond to 13. So everything plays off of noon corresponding to zero. So it says at noon, at noon, the temperature is 84 degrees. So our X coordinate is going to represent time, and our Y coordinate is going to represent temperature. And then it says by 4 p.m., so 4 p.m. would have an X value of 4. The temperature had dropped to 70 degrees. The problem says, if the temperature continues to fall at the same rate. Well, that, that phrase, at the same rate, indicates to you that you're dealing with a linear relationship. And then it asks you, what will be the temperature at noon on Friday? So, noon Friday, playing off of zero being noon Thursday, noon Friday X is going to be 24 hours later. And the question is, what's the temperature at that time? So that's what we have to figure out. So I'm going to use these two ordered pairs to write an equation that models the temperature based on time. And when you go to write a linear equation, the first thing you have to determine is the slope. So I'm going to do that. The slope would be my change in y, which would be 84 minus 70, over my change in x, which would be 0 minus 4. So I've got um, 14 over negative 4, which reduce, reducifies down to negative 7 halves. Now let's talk about that. That negative 7 halves represents the rate of change in the temperature. The fact that it's negative corresponds to, to the idea that the temperature is decreasing. It goes from 84 to 70. So just generally then, a negative slope um, represents a decreasing function. And our temperature is definitely going down. Um, so now what we want to do is we want to write the equation for the write write the equation for the relationship. So we're going to use y equals mx plus b. 
Now you folks know that M is gonna be negative seven halves. B is the y-intercept. The y-intercept occurs when the x-coordinate is zero, which gives us another reason for letting our initial time correspond to zero. We have this coordinate, these coordinates right here, zero comma 84. 84 then is your value for B, and you could just put that in. So this is our equation that models the situation that's described in the problem. Um, and then to answer our specific question, what will be the temperature when X is 24? We'll just plug in here. Y would equal negative seven halves times 24 plus 84 and let's see, two goes once, two goes 12. Negative seven times 12 would be negative 84 plus 84. It seems like 24 hours later, our temperature will be zero degrees. And that's our answer to problem number one. All right, problem number two says, write the equation in slope intercept form of the perpendicular bisector of the line segment with endpoints at negative six, one, and four, negative nine. Let's get a, let's get a, um, a visual on this. Our first point has coordinates negative six, one. So um, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. I think I could place that right there. Our second point, the other end point of our line segment is at four, negative nine. That'd be right about here. So here's our line segment. There. Now, it tells us that um, that these are the coordinates of the endpoints, and we are charged with writing the equation of the perpendicular bisector. Well, this this term perpendicular bisector tells you a lot of stuff. It tells you that the line is perpendicular to our given line. And it also tells you that because it's the bisector, it goes through the midpoint. So the first thing I'm gonna do is find the midpoint. The midpoint is the average of the two endpoints. So my X coordinate of my midpoint is gonna be one plus four divided by two, I'm sorry, negative six plus four divided by two. And then the average of the y's would be one minus nine divided by two. So it seems that my midpoint is gonna have coordinates uh, negative one and then negative four. And I'll go ahead and plot those. Negative one, negative four is right here. That's the midpoint. Now the line that I have to write the equation for is perpendicular to the line segment. So this point, negative one, negative four, is on the line that I have to write the equation for but you cannot write the equation for a line unless you know its slope. What we'll do to get the slope is, we'll find the slope of the line segment, and then we'll take the opposite reciprocal. So the slope of the line segment is gonna equal 
the change in the y, so it'd be y plus, or one plus nine, divided by the change in the x, so it'd be negative six minus four. So that'd be 10 over negative 10, which would be negative one. So the slope of any line that's perpendicular, that's perpendicular to this line, line segment would be positive one. So here's what I know about this line. It has a slope of one and it contains the point negative one, negative four. So I'm ready to write the equation. I always write my equations using this, um, this form y minus y sub one equals m times x minus x sub one. And then I substitute for x sub one, for y sub one, and for m. So for uh, y sub one, I'm gonna put in negative four. So I would have y plus four. For m, I'm gonna put in positive one and for x sub one, I'm gonna put in negative one. So I'll have x plus one. And if I just um, subtract four from each side, I'm gonna have y equals x minus three, and that would be my answer. And if you look at this, if you look at this line, it looks like it goes through right about there, which would be three for the y-intercept, or negative three. So there you have your answer to number two on this mini quiz. Let's go on to number three. Number three says, find the perpendicular distance between the two given lines. I think it's gonna be enormously helpful to get a visual on this. So I'm going to graph those lines. And the first line is the line y equals the square root of 3x plus 10. So um, let's just say that uh, that would be the y-intercept 10. The square root of 3 is about 1.7, so it's a fairly steep line. So I'm going to just try to draw that line like this. So this is the line y equals the square root of 3x plus 10. Now the second line is y equals the square root of 3x minus 8. So it's parallel to this line, but it has a y-intercept of negative 8. So let's say right there would be negative 8. And I'm going to try to draw these lines parallel to each other. So this is the line y equals the square root of 3x minus 8. And we have to write, we have to uh, figure out what the perpendicular distance is between these two lines. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw in a line that's perpendicular. Now, of course, if it's perpendicular to one, it's perpendicular to the other. All right. And these are perpendicular here. And my job is to find this distance right here. I'll just call that D. All right, so here's the game plan. We know the coordinates of this point right here are 0, 10. We do not know the coordinates of this point. For right now, I'm just going to call those x, y. However, let's suppose we did know those two coordinates. If we had values for x and y, we could then just use our distance formula to find the distance between this point and the point 0, 10. So I'm going to find these, this ordered pair by finding the point of intersection between this line 
and the line y equals radical 3x minus 8. So the first order of business then is to write the equation for this line. Well, we know that any line that's perpendicular is going to have a slope that's equal to the opposite reciprocal. So the slope of each of these lines, the slope of these, each of these lines is the square root of 3. So the slope of any line that's perpendicular would be negative 1 over the square root of 3. That would be the opposite reciprocal. Now, we're going to take this and we're going to rationalize this by multiplying by the strategic form of 1, radical 3 over radical 3, to get negative radical 3 over 3. All right. So the slope of this line right here would be negative radical 3 over 3. The y-intercept of that line is 10. So this, this line would have an equation of y equals negative radical 3 over 3x, and then the y-intercept is 10 plus 10. And my job is to find this point of intersection between the line y equals radical 3x minus 8 and this line y equals negative radical 3 over 3x plus 10. So that creates a system. So I have y equals the square root of 3x minus 8 and y equals negative radical 3 over 3 times x plus 10. And I need to solve this system. When I solve this system, I'll have these two numbers, x, y. Once I have those two numbers, I'll just plug into my distance formula to find my value for d. So to solve this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and substitute it for y. So I'm going to have the square root of 3x minus 8 equals negative radical 3 over 3x plus 10. All right, you know what's bothering me is this fraction right here. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this whole equation and just multiply everything by 3 just to eliminate the fraction. That's just how I do things. You do not have to do your algebra this way. This is how I would do it, though. Multiply everything by 3, so that gives me 3 square roots of 3x minus 24 equals negative radical 3x plus 30. Now, if I take this negative radical 3x and move it over here, it becomes a positive 1 radical 3x, so I'd have 4 radical 3x, and if I move the 24 over there, I'm going to get 54. Now, I'm trying to isolate the x, so I'm just going to divide by that um, 4 radical 3. So I'm going to have x equals 54 over 4 square roots of 3. I'm going to go ahead and multiply by radical 3 over radical 3. That will give me 54 square roots of 3. And on the bottom, I'm going to have um, 12. The common factor between the 54 and the 12 is a 6. So if I divide this by 6, I get 9. If I divide this by 6, I get 2. So my x value is going to be 9 square roots of 3 divided by 2. To get y, I'm going to come back and I'm going to plug into this first equation here. So y is going to equal the square root of 3 times x, but 9 radical 3 over 2 is my x value, minus 8. So Radical 3 times radical 3 would be 3 times 9 would be 27 over 2. 
And I'm going to go ahead and change the 8 to 16 over 2. So it, it seems that my value for y is going to be 11 halves. So this point right here has coordinates 9 radical 3 over 2, 11 halves. And I'm going to use my distance formula um, between that point and the point zero ten. So here we go. The distance is going to equal square root of, and I got to subtract my x's. So I'm going to have um, nine radical three over two minus zero quantity squared. Plus I got to subtract my y's. So I'll have eleven halves minus 10. Now I'm going to go ahead and, and change that 10 to 20 over 2 to get a common denominator squared. So this would give me 9 square roots of 3 over 2 squared plus negative 9 halves squared. So that would be the square root of, now when I square this, I'd have um, 81 times 3 would be 243. And I square the 2 in the denominator, I get 4. When I square this fraction, I'd have 81 over 4. So that's going to give me the square root of 324 over 4, which would be the square root of 81, which is 9. And that's my answer. The distance here would be 9. Great problem, huh? You guys can do that. Okay, onward we go. Um, we're looking at problem number four. It says, find the x-intercept. By the way, this was number two, and this was number three. For number four, I'm going to get some more space here. Number four says... Um, find the x-intercept of the line determined by these points. The points are negative 10, 15, and negative 8, 3. So my game plan is to write the equation for the line and then find the x-intercept by substituting 0 for y. So the slope here would be the change in the y values. So I'd have 15 minus 3 over the change in the x values. So I'd have negative 10 plus 8. So that gives me a 12, and it gives me a negative 2. So it seems that the slope of the line that contains those two points is negative 6. And once again, I always write my equations using the point-slope form which is y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. Now that negative 6 is going to be substituted for m. For uh, x sub 1, I'm going to go ahead and substitute negative 8. And for y sub 1, I'm going to go ahead and substitute 3. If you want to substitute negative 10 and 15, you can, it makes no difference which point you use because both of those points are on the line. So I'm going to have y minus 3 equals negative 6 times x plus 8. y minus 3 would then equal, I'm going to distribute the negative 6, get negative 6x minus 48. Then I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So I have y equals negative 6x minus 45. 
So this is the equation of the line that we're supposed to find the x-intercept of. To find the x-intercept, you substitute 0 for y, and you solve for x. So I'd have 45 equals negative 6x, or negative 45 sixth is equal to x. And that would reduceify if you take a 3 out to negative 15 halves. So that's the x-intercept of the line that contains those two points. Not too bad, huh? All right, number five. Um, number five says, uh, consider the points A with coordinates 7, 2, and B with coordinates negative 9, 18. And we're also supposed to consider the points C with uh, coordinates negative 6, 0, and the point D with coordinates 6, negative 12. So we have the coordinates of four points. Write the equation in slope-intercept form of the line containing the midpoints of segment AB and segment CD. So the midpoint of AB and the midpoint of segment CD. All right, so here we go. The midpoint of AB would be the average of the x's and the y's. So um, 7 minus 19 divided by 2, 2 plus 18 divided by 2, and it seems like the midpoint of segment AB is going to be, uh, that'd be negative 12 divided by 2, that'd be negative 6, and it would be 10. And then the midpoint of CD, we'd have negative 6 plus 6 divided by 2, and we'd have 0 minus 12 divided by 2. So the midpoint of segment CD is going to be 0, comma, negative 6. And it says for us to write the equation in slope-intercept form of the line that contains those two points. So these are the two points here. First thing we have to do is find the slope. So the slope would be the change in the y. So I'm going to have 10 plus 6 over negative 6 minus 0. So that would be 16 over negative 6, which reducifies to negative 8 thirds. So the line we have to write the equation for has a slope of negative 8 thirds, and it contains these two points. So I'm going to write down my point slope form, y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. I will be substituting negative 8 thirds for m, and I'm going to go ahead and, um, oh, you know what? Look at this right here. This is the y-intercept. I don't even need to do this. I got my slope. I got my y-intercept, so I'm done. So my, um, my equation then is going to be... Um, you know, some, I made an error somewhere. Not sure where. Let's help me with my arithmetic here, with you, if you would. Let's see. Seven minus nineteen would be um, negative twelve divided by two would be negative six, and then um, two and eighteen would be twenty divided by two is ten. So I'm good there with the midpoint of AB. Um, and then the midpoint of CD, I've got um, negative 6 and 6, that'd be 0. And then I've got 0 and negative 12, that'd be negative 6. So my slope, I have 10 plus 6, and then I have um, 
that'd be 16. And then I have uh, negative six minus zero. So I'm okay with that. Uh, something doesn't seem right. Um, apologize for the delay here, but um, Oh, you know what? Here's the problem right here. I copied the problem wrong. That was supposed to be a negative nine. So we're gonna do a little redo and I, I apologize. So let's just run through this. It won't take us long. This is gonna be negative nine. So I have uh, seven minus nine would be uh, negative two divided by two. So this is gonna be negative one here. All right. So um, then when I go to find my slope, when I go to find my slope, I'm going to have to find uh, the, the change in y between this point and this point. So my slope is going to be 10 plus 6. And then my change in x would be um, negative 1 minus 0. So I'm gonna have um, negative 16, that's my slope. This is still the y-intercept. So I have the slope and I have the y-intercept, so my line is very simply gonna be uh, negative 16x and then minus six. And that's the answer. And I apologize for the error I made taking up your precious time by having to rework all that. Once again, my error was I put down negative 19 instead of negative nine. I just misread the problem. Onward we go. Um, let's take a look at um, number six. Number six uh, says, consider the point A, and I'll try to get this right, folks, 12, negative two, B, with coordinates 15, 10. Um, and we also supposed to consider point C with coordinates negative 2, 10. And D, which has coordinates 3, comma, 1, and 2 thirds. Okay, what's it say? We're supposed to Find the coordinates of the point of intersection of lines A, B, and C, D. So we're supposed to um, find point of intersection of A, B, and C, D. So the game plan would be to write the equation for A, B, Write the equation for CD and then solve that linear system. So here we go. The slope of AB. The slope of line AB is going to be negative 2 minus 10 on top and on the bottom 12 minus 15. So that would be negative 12 over negative 3, which is 4. So the slope of AB is 4. Negative 2 minus 10 over 12 minus 15. So we're good there. Um, the slope of CD would be the change in Y. So that would be um, 10 minus one and two thirds over the change in X, which would be negative two minus three. So if you'll allow me, I'm gonna take 10 and write it as 30 thirds. I'm gonna take one and two thirds and write it as five thirds. Downstairs, negative two minus three is gonna be negative five. So upstairs, 30 thirds minus five thirds would be 25 thirds. 
And then instead of dividing by negative five, I'm gonna multiply by the reciprocal, which would be negative one fifth. This five and this 25 cancel. The five becomes one, the 25 becomes five, and I end up with negative five thirds as my slope for line CD. Now I'm gonna write the equation for line AB. Write the equation for line AB. And I'm gonna use my point slope form. So I'm gonna have Y minus Y sub one equals M times X minus X sub one. For the slope, I'm gonna put in four. For X sub one, I'm gonna put in um, 12. And for y sub one, I'll put in negative two. So here we go. I have y plus two equals four times x minus 12. y plus two equals, distributing the four, four x minus 48. Adding two, will isolate the y. I have y equals 4x minus 46. So this is line AB here. I'm just gonna go ahead and circle that. Now we're gonna find line CD. I'm gonna find CD. I'm gonna use my point slope form again. y minus y sub one equals m times x minus x sub one. For m, I'm gonna put in negative five thirds, and for um, x sub one, I'll put in negative two, and for y sub one, I'll put in 10. So here we go, I'm gonna have y minus 10 equals negative five thirds times x plus two. So I have y minus 10 equals negative 5 thirds x minus 10 thirds. Now I need to add 10 to both sides. I'm going to add 10 as 30 thirds plus 30 thirds plus 30 so that's going to give me y equals negative 5 thirds x. And when I add 30 thirds to negative 10 thirds, I'm going to get positive 20 thirds. And this is the equation for line C, D right here. Okay. My job is to find the point of intersection of those two lines. So I've created this system then. Line AB is Y equals 4X minus 46. And line CD um, is Y equals negative 5 thirds X plus 20 thirds. Now, before I solve this system, here's what I want to do. I want to go back and check everything I've done so far and make sure I have those two equations correct. So, first thing I want to do is find the intersection. Uh, first thing I want to do, rather, was find the slope of AB. So, I'm going to check that. I've got um, negative 2 minus 10, and I've got 12 minus 15. So, that gives me a negative 12 over negative 3. So, my slope turns out to be 4. So, we're good there. Slope of CD, I'm subtracting the Y's on top, so I have 10 minus one and two thirds, and then negative two minus three are my X coordinates, so I'm subtracting in the denominator. I change this 10 to 30 over three, um, minus, I changed the one and two thirds to five thirds. When I subtracted, that gave me 25 thirds. And then I multiplied by the reciprocal, so I'm coming up with negative five thirds for my slope. So I'm pretty good I'm pretty sure I'm good on slope. Okay, then I substituted into my uh, point slope form. For AB, I'm putting in um, negative two for Y, 
and I'm putting in 12 for x. So I've got y plus 2 equals my slope is 4 times x minus 12. Uh, I made an error here. Look at this. This should be, when I subtract 2 here, this should be 50 minus 50. So that's my error there. This should be minus 50. Okay. Okay, let's check out CD, make sure I did that correctly. Um, I'm going to uh, plug in. I'm going to use uh, this first point for my x sub 1, y sub 1. So I'm putting in negative 2 right there for x sub 1. I'm putting in 10 for y sub 1, and my slope is negative 5 thirds. Uh, when I distribute, I get negative 5 thirds x minus 10 thirds. I added 10 by really adding 30 thirds, so that gave me a positive 20 thirds. So I'm good to go with this system. Um, let's see, how about if to solve this, I just take this here and substitute it for y. So when I do that, I'm going to have 4x minus 50 equals negative 5 thirds x plus 20 thirds. I'm going to get rid of those fractions by multiplying the entire equation by 3, every term by 3. So that gives me 12x minus 150 equals negative 5x plus 20. Now, if I add 5x, I get 17x. If I add 150, I get 170. If I divide by 17, x turns out to be 10. So I'm going to take this 10 and put it right there for x. So y would equal 4 times 10 minus 50, and then that would be 40 minus 50, and that would be negative 10. So we're asked to find a point of intersection, and the answer is going to be um, 10, negative 10 for the final answer. So, students, first problem, the answer turns out to be zero. We created an equation based upon the two uh, ordered pairs that were provided for us. Uh, and then we substituted 24 uh, in for our uh, x value, which would stand for 24 hours after the original time. And the temperature then would be zero. Uh, perpendicular bisector, remember that tells you a lot of important information. It tells you what uh, gives you a point because that the line contains because that means the bisector part tells you it goes through the midpoint. Also, because it's perpendicular, the uh, slope of the line is the opposite reciprocal of the slope of the line segment. So this involved finding the slope and then uh, finding the midpoint and then plugging those values into your point slope form. Problem number three from my experience is the one that gives students the greatest challenge. Um, I think that drawing a diagram is very important here. It gives you a visual on what you're supposed to do. Ultimately, you're solving a system to get those disordered pair, and then you uh, substitute disordered pair and uh, the uh, y-intercept of, of the line y equals radical 3x plus 10 into the, um, into the distance formula right here. And uh, it's really ugly coming through here with all these radicals and everything, but it really turns out rather nicely to give you a value of 9. Um, uh, number 4 asks you to um, find uh, the uh, um, equation of a line and then to uh, determine what its x-intercept would be. So you had to write the equation first. Um, Number five, um, that was the one I messed up on because I mis miscopied here, but you were given four points. So you had to um, write uh, the equation of the line that contained the midpoints of two line segments. So you first had to determine the midpoints. And uh, then once you had those, those two, you had to find the slope using those two points. And fortunately, it turned out that one of the points had an x-coordinate of zero. So that automatically gave us our our uh, y-intercept here. Um, and then uh, number number six was probably the most involved. What we had to do is we had to um, 
write the equations of two lines and then find the point of intersection by solving a system. So a lot of stuff going on here. You can handle this though. I hope my explanation is helpful to you on the several problems that you may have had difficulty with. Thank you for your attention.